So this is just a quickish video looking at casting up some pewter, uh, which is going to be this guy. Now this has got a bit of weight to it, and what it is, is a gear stick topper for a van. Now this has been made as a present for a family member, and a few years back I made a similar um, gear stick topper, but this time out of epoxy resin, there's a picture of it here, and this was my first kind of proper go at doing some clear casting in a resin and this came out pretty well actually the problem we found though there was that over the years the resin started yellowing and I guess that's because of the UV and the sunlight that it was exposed to now a lot of resins like this and the one I used did say that they were UV resistant and wouldn't yellow but that's obviously proved not to be the case so I wanted to do something that was a little bit more durable and um, had a little bit of a different take I suppose so uh, given that I've been doing skulls recently it seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to do a cast in of a skull. So I'm just going to go through how I did this and sort of various pitfalls really. You've seen me casting pewter on the channel before uh, but I'm always keen to have another go with it. So I'm just going to go through the various stages that I went through to get to this point. So this is the piece I'm going to be casting and it's a resin copy of one of the skulls that I've recently made. As you can see I've got it in a wooden container and the face of the skull is facing towards the open side of the container. Now there's a few reasons for this. The first is that the type of silicon that I'm using actually cures a lot quicker than the stuff that I'm used to using and because of that I want any air bubbles that might get trapped on the surface of the piece to move away from the detail I want to retain uh, which in this case is the face of the skull. So it's just in this orientation so any air that might potentially get trapped will move away from those details. Now when I've previously done pewter casting, I have noticed that the mould has a tendency to bulge from the heat of the material. So for that reason I've created this wooden enclosure to hold the mould in place when that happens. As you can also see I've got some air channels glued onto the chin of the skull and that's because the uh, jaw is basically going to be above the point where the pewter pours into the mould. So I need some channels to allow the air to escape and so the pewter can fill that cavity. So that's all ready to go, so I can now pour some rice into the mould, and that's so I can gauge the volume of the silicon that I'll need. This is quite a nice method of doing that, but because I'm often casting clay sculptures and things like that, you can't always use it. Pouring rice onto a clay sculpture can of course damage it, so I don't tend to use it in those circumstances. But in this case, this is a resin copy, so there's no problem doing it here. So I can now start pouring out my silicon. And I've got 458 grams of the first part of the silicon here. So I can now zero the scales and pour out an equal amount of the second part of the silicon. Now from previous experience I know that this stuff actually cures pretty quickly so once I've got equal parts of the silicon poured into the mixing cup there I need to move quite fast so I'm mixing this up as quickly as I can. I have previously been sort of caught by surprise when I've been mixing this stuff up because it started to cure almost as I'm ready to pour so I'm trying to move as quickly as I can here. Now handily the two halves of the silicon are different colours so you can quite easily see if you haven't mixed this thoroughly enough. Once you've got an even colour throughout the whole of the silicon you're ready to go. So it's looking pretty good so I can now pour this into my mould. I'm just using my finger quickly here to make sure that the silicon is pushed into all of the details on the face of the skull because that's really the detail I want to retain. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. As you can see, there's quite a few air bubbles moving out of the silicon and bubbling on the surface. Normally, I tend to degas my silicon by putting it in a vacuum chamber, but because this stuff cures quite quickly, I really didn't have time to do this, so I'm hoping that there won't be any air trapped on the surface of the piece I'm casting. Okay, so I've left that for a few hours and that's now set, so I can now undo the wooden enclosure that I've created and start freeing the piece from the mould. So 
So I'm going to cut the back of the mould to free the piece. And this is slightly more complicated than the usual method I would use. Because this silicon is much tougher than the regular stuff that I use, it doesn't flex so much, so it's much harder to actually uh, bend the mould and actually get the piece out. So I'm having to cut this quite carefully and slowly to sort of slowly free the piece from the mould. Something else to consider as well is that normally when you cast resin, if you do have some air channels and things, because the resin is relatively weak, those thinner pieces are likely to snap off. But if you're casting in pewter, then that's a metal and obviously it's much tougher. And so air channels and things like that won't snap off. So what I'm also having to do is to cut the mold into the air channels so that they can be freed. Normally you can just sort of pull them out with tweezers or, or pliers if you're casting resin. But in this case, they simply won't snap off. So I need to think about freeing those as well. After a while it became apparent that I'm actually going to have to cut this uh, much further than I originally intended but as you can see I've eventually got the piece out here. Unfortunately the cut line goes almost all the way down to the forehead of the skull. That's not ideal but it shouldn't be too much of a problem hopefully. So I'm just pulling these air channels out with some pliers and then I should be ready to go. Now I mentioned in a previous video that I've been having a go casting with graphite powder and the idea for this actually came from my previous pewter casting video. Someone suggested that a way to avoid getting sort of pitting on the surface of the pewter piece was actually to brush the mould with graphite powder. I had been using baby powder on mine and that seemed to work well enough but apparently graphite powder is used quite widely so I was interested to give that a go on this piece. So I've got some here, I'm going to brush that onto the interior of the mould and just sort of shake it about so I've got an even coverage. Okay, well that's ready, so I can now put the mould back into the wooden container. Now I know you can buy proper equipment for melting pewter, and if I start doing this as a matter of routine I'll probably get some, but for the time being a blowtorch seems to work well enough. I'm just using a wooden spatula to get rid of all this sort of dust and dirt that's accumulated on the surface of the pewter. Okay, so I think we're ready to go, so I'm going to pour that into the mould. Okay, so a bit of a problem straight away. I don't think I had quite enough pewter to actually fully fill the mould. As you can see, it's not quite at the top level. Um, so I suspect that this probably hasn't completely captured all of the skull, but we'll wait for that to cool down, then we'll get it out and have a look. Okay, it's still a little bit too hot to pick up, so I'm just going to get a glove. But yeah, as you can see, it hasn't quite captured all of the jaw there. So what I'm going to have to do is melt this down with some additional pewter and have another go. Okay, so this time around that's looking a bit more successful. It's come up to the top of the pouring spout, which is good. Now I can't see any pewter having come up the air channels, but if I look carefully, I think I can see some at the bottom. So that probably means that the pewter's got up to the bottom level of the jaw. Uh, but we'll have to wait for this to cool down uh, before we can take it out and have a look. Okay, so I've left that for a while and I can now try and get this out. 
Okay, there we go. So actually, yep, it's looking pretty good. It's captured all of the detail that I want. Now it has got a bit of a golden sheen to the uh, pewter, and I'm not quite sure if that's as a result of the graphite powder or for some other reason. I wonder whether the blowtorch uh, being used might have caused that. Um, so that's not a problem exactly. Um, I don't have any sort of pitting or air bubbles on the surface, which was something that I did encounter on my previous um, go uh, several months back. So all in all, that's looking pretty good. So I just need to snip off these air channels and do a little bit of cleanup. So I did have a go with this on the polishing wheel, but it actually came out fairly dull having done that. So what I eventually found was that the best way to deal with this was just to have a go at it with some wire wool. And that's giving it quite a nice sort of silvery sheen, so it's not looking too bad. And the final step with this is really just to give it a bit of sort of weathering and antiquing. So what I'm doing is to cover it in black spray paint. And once that's dry, what I can do is come back with a wire wall and start sanding that away. What happens is that the black spray paint is left in all of the uh, detail of the piece. And that just gives it a sort of a degree of um, contrast and helps bring out all the details in the sculpture. So yeah, there we go. I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, the last detail was for me to add a steel bar to the base of this, and that's just so that it can be attached to the gear stick. But yeah, quite pleased with that. I think that's quite a, quite a cool little project for a few hours' work. I must say, I do like doing little small projects like this that can sort of be accomplished in a day or an afternoon. A lot of projects I'm doing these days sort of take months and months to complete, so it's actually quite nice to do something that you can actually finish off in a relatively short period of time and just get quite a nice result quite quickly. So that's quite cool. Um, so I think that's it for this one. I hope this was interesting. I do quite like pewter casting, so I think I would like to do some more of this uh, in the future. I've got a few ideas for what that could be. But for the time being, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.